Necromancy has been fleshed out a massive amount now in the Skyrim Anniversary Edition. You can summon a whole bunch of new creatures. There's 13 new spells associated with Necromancy and there's supposed to be two new robe sets as well as some hoods. I'm going to show and explain where to pick up the majority of these spells and to where to get one of these Necromancy brand new robe sets. And I need your help finding the one with the blue writing. It's been impossible. I've gone to every location where Necromancers do dwell and it has been absolutely a needle in a haystack. Five hours of recording today trying to do the best guide I can for this and I still can't find this particular robe set. So let's start with the robes I did find, which are still pretty rare if you are going to go and stalk a lot of these necromancy sites. Let's start off with the Nelter's Deep, which is just to the west of Riverwood here. You'll find a dungeon inside the keep and you're going to have to clear out a bunch of necromancers. It's not that big or complex, but there's quite a few in here and they can be quite challenging. Eventually you'll make your way down and you come across a few skeletons and yeah, the necromancers. So you were looking for arch necromancers basically. The adepts will all wear the bog standard necromancy robes that you come to expect. Although there are chances of finding some tomes on these guys as well as some of these containers in these hideouts. So if you want one of the new 13 necromancy spells, best bet is to clear out all of these dungeons that I have done and then hopefully you'll get a chance. I will list them all the places that you need to go and show you a little bit of some of them. God damn, I love that kill cam. So we've got a lot to get through. I'm not gonna be doing a beat for beat guide for every one of these dungeons. They're not that hard to go through. It's pretty much signposted and you'll come across lots of these bad guys in the next few rooms. But basically, yeah, the Arch Necromancer, are, these are the kinds of guys you want to be looking for as they have got the greatest chance of having some of the new robes. It's only a cosmetic thing, but they look really cool and I really want both of them. So here you can see this one is a Necromancer Hood of Major Magicka and increases your Magicka by 40 points. That is definitely not to be sniffed at, that's pretty good. And this is the robes of recharging. Again, they'll have different abilities or enchants on them, but it's the look of them. This is unique with the new anniversary DLC or upgrade. Eventually you'll make your way through the rest of the dungeon and there'll be another necromancer arch one across the water in this area. Although I was a bit saddened that I took this one out and it didn't actually have one of the new sets on it. It does seem like it's a random spawn chance in some of these locations, but it does look like this particular place is the first place you should go for. It's probably one of maybe two places that I've discovered two sets of these new robes. There's a few underwater sections in this dungeon as well. Make sure you explore them properly and like I said, loot every chest that you can as there's a chance you might find one of the new spell tomes. Following this underwater passage, you can see I found the Conjure Cursed Spectre. So I am going to list all of these off in a while. Now, if you're not too fussed about the robes and you just want the spells, well, you can go and take a look at Windhold College and you need to find this dude. Finnis Jester will sell you all 13 of the spells, but it's a random chance of which ones appear. And you do have to level up your actual conjuring skills to gain access to some of the later ones from him. Undying Ghost is another brand new one, as well as the Soul Split. All the rest are older ones or associated with other DLCs. Big shout out to all the people in the actual Bethesda Skyrim Discord who helped me out with this earlier. But effectively, yes, go and buy some from him. Go and do some more quests. Maybe take care of some more of the places where the Necromancers will be. And then come back a couple days later and hopefully you'll have some new spells to actually buy from him. I would suggest try and buy some of the rest of them as well so he's almost completely empty. That way you've got more chance of more of the books spawning. I did try another bunch of Necromancers or Mages that sell stuff to you. And a lot of them just had the regular stuff. None of the actual new ones. So that knowledge, you could probably just about make do with this. Keep coming back to him if you're not in any rush. Eventually you want to get them. Let's go through the spells that I did learn. I think there was only two that I couldn't manage to find in all that time, which was the Warlock and the Champion. So here is a skeletal minion. He will pretty much die with one hit from anything from medium to high enemies. Slower enemies, lower creatures, it might be good to just have as a little companion. But remember, these only last about 60 seconds at most, unless you have managed to increase, I do believe, your conjuring skills to legendary, where then you can increase it a bit longer. Then you've got the skeleton marksman, who's going to obviously use arrows and they weaken their foes. And yeah, he's pretty much the same thing, but just a ranged more creature. 
I love the look of the Guardian. He does indeed look like some sort of execution style character. And he's pretty formidable, actually. This guy's a bit of a tough nut. Again, much better than the first two that we just had. If this guy manages to kill an enemy, it will create a shade in its place. Now, I have got some footage of some of these guys in action, but to be honest, it was a bit chaotic as I was obviously fending for my life, fighting off against all sorts of necromancers and stuff. So I thought I'd show these a little bit more in detail what you get to see looking like up close. Next up, we got the Haunting Spirit, which is a bit different. When the spirit dies, it's going to actually take 10 points of skill from whatever killed it, and it basically transfer it to you. At best, a lot of these are kind of distractions, so that at least this one's going to give you some bonus, either health points or magic art, etc. Next up, we've got the Undying Ghost. It looks like a bit of a hardened warrior. This guy is very different. It will use every single bit of your magicka to summon him, but he'll have bonus or double the amount that you had originally in terms of how much damage he can do but at a cap of 600 so that's as far as you can go with him so he'll do a lot a lot of magic damage i'm guessing or melee damage if you've got a good amount of magic up next up we've got the ancient death priest which is one of my favorites he'll command the undead for a little while as well when he kills as dies he's going to actually split into tortured shades three of them in fact so he's pretty op and this is obviously going to be one of the more expensive ones it's going to cost a lot of magicka so you may have to be quite high level before you're using him on a regular basis if you're going to be using all of your necromancy skills you might want to pull off this one first the necromancy ritual basically gives you 30 health and magic art every time one of your summons dies so usually put that one up first and then go ahead and summon your other creatures so banished undead is a bit of a weird one it's meant to get rid of any creatures that are dead up to that level in magic art. didn't really work on these guys and yeah i wouldn't say this is one of the most useful ones this next one is a little bit of an expensive one as well. It's a Spectre, and he's going to drain the health and magicka from any enemies nearby. I like him because he's got a little bit more in terms of looks. Nice little green glow instead of just the blue. Then we've got the Bone Colossus, which I think is going to be a lot of people's favourites. He's a big old dude, this guy. He actually is going to regenerate health for any other skeletons that you've already summoned, and it can ad summon additional skeletons with this one as well. So what that means is you might want to summon one skeleton and then you summon Bony and then you summon another skeleton and you'll have three summoned creatures fighting for your side. And effectively, as long as this guy stays alive, the other two should hopefully last a bit longer. As I mentioned earlier, they are a bit rubbish, but it does take considerable amount of magicka. I've got about 400 here and as you saw, it took quite a big chunk. I'm not rattling off the complete skills or stats because it's all based on what level you are anyway. And then after that, as I said, there's two that I just cannot find anywhere. Like I said, I cleared out so many dungeons. So I'm guessing they're related to either something really high level, or you might only be able to get them from maybe defeating possibly dragon priests. And that is the conjuring a warlock and conjuring a uh, skeletal warlock and conjuring a skeletal champion. The warlock does powerful shock damage and the skeleton champion is going to do extra 10% attack damage for every enemy that's nearby up to five. And then Soul Split is meant to basically sacrifice one of your ghosts, one of your conjured, and basically summon two shades instead of its place. So if you have seen one of them take a bit of a hit, it might be worth doing that just to get more out of it. So I hope that part of this guide has helped you out, at least aim for it. And like I said, if I do find out where that other robe is, I will do a separate video and I'll also show you guys where the warlock and the champion will be. But literally, I just cannot find him. I've gone and reloaded different games. I used some mods just to spawn stuff in and see if I could find a way to re kind of jig where I was finding some of these and I just couldn't find any. So the wiki lists a whole bunch of places that you can go where there will be some necromancers and I didn't find too many. I did find lots of spell books, well, about four at different locations and just one or two of the actual buttoned robe necromancer sets, the new ones. In fact, next to this place, which is just an unmarked altar near Whiterun, I found the Summon the Minion skeletal one. Next, I went to the Ritual Stone and see if there was anything going on here because this is another location of some more of the arch mages or at least some necromancers and yeah there's plenty of undead creatures and another necromancer but no actual new stuff 
There's a place called Wolf Skull Cave. It's not actually marked on the map unless you're a right level or you've done some solitude quests for the steward. It's normally filled with necromancers at that point. But if you go in too early, what instead you'll find is it's just filled with bandits and you can't actually access the rest of the cave. It wasn't until I got deeper into the actual fort and hold that I eventually come up against a few. Maybe this will be the location for that second set. Fort Snowhawk just south of Solitude. This place had absolute tons of necromancers but there was literally nothing going on with any of the new robes or they did get a couple of the spell books though. Just south west of Windhelm I went to Movonska to uh, see if there was something here. It was mostly filled with just mages although according to the wiki it has got an arch age necromancer as the kind of boss. Uh, Naris the wicked and he didn't have anything he was pretty disappointing. Then it was off to Hobbs Full Cave. Lots, lots of necromancers in here and lots of ice caves as well as some skeletons. But even here, once I took out the master necromancer, he had nothing on him either. Although the main reason I'm showing you this was because inside this chest, there was a huge amount of tomes. I don't know if they were kind of meant to be here or maybe they're part of another creation kit item, but just look how many were in this one single chest. So a little bonus for you, go here and get a bunch of this stuff. Eventually at the very end you'll come up against another master necromancer and a few smaller ones and once you take them all out he actually did have one of the newer robes and the hood again. Maybe it'll be completely random, maybe when you try it there will be some of the newer style ones or the, the second one. Let me know in the comment section if you've come across and please give me the location. Obviously I know it can be radiant and things will change. This one also had the undying ghost on her as well so it's always a little bit random. I'm kind of hoping that if we know all the locations then we can keep just trying and eventually someone will say they managed to find the second rope or they found some of the more elusive spells. Then it was off to Felglow Keep to the east of Whiterun. I had to go deep deep into this keep to actually find some necromancers inside this big barrow with loads of skeletons. And absolutely nothing in this one either. Just some of the older bog standard necromancy spells like Raising Zombies. I cleared the whole of this dungeon out which took a good amount of time and absolutely nothing else could I find. And then finally I went to Hillgrun's tomb just to the east of Whiterun. Golda here is saying that his aunt or sister is inside with all of their dead body relatives and the necromancers in there too. This is meant to be a low level dungeon believe it or not but I found it pretty tough. There was quite a lot of the higher biggest tougher hulking draugas and uh, white draugas and stuff. So maybe it was taking notice of my level which had gone up quite considerably in the 4-5 hours that I was doing this. Eventually you'll end up in this big arena to fight Val Varan, another supposed necromancer. What was really cool was I think I did a spell or it's part of it anyway where I actually brought him to life to actually fight alongside us. There was a ton of the Draugr appeared and they were pretty challenging. So yeah, I'm not 100% sure what triggered it to actually fight alongside us. But there you go, it was doing the job. By the end of the day, nothing from him either. No brand new stuff. And there we go, that's about it guys. I tried doing my best. This is a bit of a longer video than some of the rest have been doing on Skyrim. But obviously it was more involved and I did put a lot more effort into it. So I want to show you guys how much I tried to find them last two spells and the second robe set. Let me know in the comment section if you know where they are. And go and check out the rest of my guides. And I'll see you rat bags later.